Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. I'm Joshua Hanlon here at Bricks Cascade in Portland, Oregon, and today we're taking a look at my top 10 favorite builds here at the show. Behind me is this incredible Jurassic Park collaborative layout. We'll have a more in-depth video showing all the movement when interviewing the builders on this as well, but we wanted to give you an overview. There's a huge volcano here, and then you've got this massive monorail track, and in between that monorail is tons of dinosaurs as well as kind of safety bunkers. There's helipads. You've got this huge tower over here, which is like an observation area where you can look down and see a bunch of the dinosaurs. There's lots of armored trucks and vehicles. There's even a themed Wally -E inside there as well. Then you've got a smaller train kind of running through the mountain on this corner. You get a small water section with another helipad and some boats here as well, which I think just really kind of adds some different types of uh, natural landscapes to the layout. There's a larger structure there in between the monorail track. Then here you see a herd of goats kind of joining the dinosaurs. Uh, you've got the big T-Rexes in the back attacking the tower in the distance there. Here you've got the power substation and then the meeting the Brachiosaurus scene here up front. When we come over to this side of the layout, this is the gift shop, which looks fantastic with lights inside. You've got the tower full of bones at the top, which is a really fun design. You've got different visitors and security mixing here. Then you've got the bookstore and kind of a whole main street along here with coffee shops and things, dinosaurs as well. And then you've got the main office at the end, and of course your giant hot dog here as well, which every Jurassic Park layout needs. Then there's a the little kitty park in the back with some fun rides. That brings us over here to the Jurassic Tours area and the monorail station, and then these big armored research vehicles. And finally, back to the train bridge here, and the volcano, and you can also see the uh, Barba stud uh, can here as well. So incredible amount of details in this layout. This is a huge coral reef built by Eric Matson. What makes this build so incredible is the depth to it. So you have all of this amazing plant life in front, kind of underwater plant life and coral, both here in the white sand bed and then as well as connected to the rocks there. Just an amazing array of Lego colors that he's represented. Also incredible techniques with building studs not on top, so the studs are kind of facing all directions here. But then I love how it kind of forces your eye into the silhouette of the whale in the very back there. And he's got that long large sheet of blue bricks creating the water effect and of course the whale is built out of lego as well so this whole build is just incredible the size of this is amazing i could climb up inside this thing and sit down inside it that's how big it is and it's really neat to see all of the fish and uh, underwater creatures he's included in here as well and a great variety of those even uh, different scales as well so excellent work here here we have some incredible mosaics done by Kate Hunter. This one in front of me is uh, Let's Build a Collaboration. Here you see kind of a world motif in the middle with the blues and greens and the planet represented and then all these different hands and different colors all around it kind of holding it up. And I think that's super fun. There's also a great kind of 3D effect here. Some of it is just the uh, kind of tiles, but then you also get some of the taller pieces as well. Next to that is this massive Star Wars inspired piece called Welcome to the Dark Side. This is a great mixture of blacks and then your kind of trans reds and oranges to create that lava effect here. Then there's even a use of a bunch of the old kind of Western whip pieces there as well. So it's great to see how Kate uses these pieces in really unique kind of cool ways. Over here is a piece called Discovery. And this you've got just kind of the basic studs for the figure but then the hair has all of this incredible kind of sunflower effect in it with the yellows and oranges running through it and that's a really nice look especially in contrast to the gray then finally you have searching and this uses the trans clear cheat slope piece along with lots of white slopes and flower elements and then kind of white tiles in general to create the silhouette of a figure. So Kate's work is, is always amazing, the scale she builds at, but also just the detail and the way that she captures both human figures and different scenes as well is amazing. This massive layout is the Bunkers Collaborative layout. This is built by 80 different builders and there are hundreds of different bunkers in here. And there are scenes from everyday life. Then there's post-apocalyptic type scenes. There's incredible plant life scenes here as well. There's an arcade. There's people camping underground here. There's a sushi shop up here. 
There's a rideable uh, metal bowl and kind of an Old West themed area. You've got big trees underneath here. The Candy Dream Bunker, very Candyland type idea. Down here you've got Batman and Joker battling it out in their bunker. One of my favorites is the GBC bunker. This is the firefighters trying to put out a fire at their own station here in their underground bunker. Then you've got, of course, the Duplo elephants, the uh, two-level uh, pub here, which is really neat, and then this massive rocket ship with the lights underneath there taking off is really incredible. So shout out to all of the builders who contributed to this. It's amazing to see here at the show every year. In front of me is a 16 foot long layout of the National Mall in Washington DC built by Wayne Tyler. We've got Capitol Hill up here at the top. And then you go down through all of the different museums here at the National Mall. You've got the Botanical Gardens, the Museum of the American Indian. Over on this side, you've got the East and West Building of the National Gallery of Art, which are some fantastic structures, the Air and Space Museum, some of the Smithsonian complex buildings, the National Museum of Natural History over here, the Museum of American History next to that, the Museum of African American History and Culture, which has this really unique kind of gold elements on the outside. Finally, you get to the Washington Monument here, this massive tower which has lights blinking in it, just like lots of the lights throughout this whole layout, which add really realistic details to the layout here. So I love just the tiny trees and the cars and the people and even the roads that the builder has added in here to give that really kind of realistic effect to the whole layout. It's amazing to see how he's worked on this over seven years to create what you see here now. Next up we have two really cool Lego map motifs. This one in front of me is by Stuart Shaw. It's the world of Avatar The Last Airbender. So here we've gotten a few different shows and movies based on this over the years and you're able to see all the different kind of kingdoms laid out like the Fire Kingdom, the Water Kingdom, Earth Kingdoms, the Air Kingdoms which is super fun and then you see some of the different kind of castle structures here. And then of course you've got this great water technique using kind of the bow pieces to create almost a waved effect. And then I like the way the builder has done the lettering in here and then framing this whole thing out as well. So what is your favorite detail in here? You can let us know in the comments. We've got one more next to this. This is Hyrule. So this is by Kimberly and Vincent Giffen. And for any Legend of Zelda fans out there, you'll recognize this right away. This is all of Hyrule Kingdom as uh, Link explores this and goes to the kind of four different areas on the map and beats their different heroes. So you've got kind of the sandy area over here and I love the big towers as well that are represented throughout this. So as you explore more of the map, you're able to go up in those towers and see more of what's going on. Then you've got the castle in the middle here as well, which is a great detail. And then just kind of the, the blue underneath as well with kind of the green on top. And so that creates this kind of overall map effect. And I also like how they've angled this and displayed it so you're able to kind of appreciate a lot of the details as you're walking around the show here. Now we're taking a look at three of my favorite builds at the show, starting with this big layout in front of me. This is Pop Culture Square by the Snowbricks. You've got the Hill Valley Courthouse from Back to the Future with the DeLorean and the flames behind it. You've got the Honey Rock Hotel from the Flintstones over there. You've got some Canadians being represented here as well. Then of course you've got the Barbie's Dream House. I love this with the slides coming down into the water and then just how vibrant that pink is. Harry Potter's house over here and then Sesame Street in the background there. I also just love all the different uh, movies and different things represented here in the center area as well. Our next build in this section is by Doug Hughes. This is the Seven Dwarves Mine taking inspiration from the new Lego set, but adding some fantastic movement on the bottom with the dwarves in their mine down there, as well as some really cool lighting with the lanterns as they go into the mines. And I love the way that he's done kind of these big rock pillars as well. It really just feels like a very immersive scene when you look down in there. And then the third one here is the Star Trek motion picture space dock. This is by James Dart. You of course have your USS Enterprise out here uh, on these kind of transclear stands. And so it looks like it's floating there in space. Some really difficult techniques in this build with lots of crazy angles and round shapes that aren't easy to achieve with Lego. But then the space dock itself is really cool because of the lighting in there. And then all of those kind of technic and greebling elements they really just kind of bring this whole scene to life. And I love the way that it kind of wraps around not only the side, but kind of top and bottom of the Enterprise as well. So three really fantastic builds right here. I love these smaller scale avatar scenes by Jake Sadovich. So you've got these big hammerhead builds here, which use some of the wing pieces really nicely. And then some of kind of the uh, horn pieces as well on their backs. 
Then you've got the uh, minifigures themselves here and their kind of walkers. And I love the way that he's used such tiny pieces to represent some of their weapons and then just the little hands that are carrying the wood pieces there and even some of the like collectible minifigure parts that he's incorporated into this as well. And then the little kind of fern pieces there. Some of these smaller animals in here are really unique. The goat faces and then the minifig legs, even some Minecraft parts I think down in there. And then here for the airships, really, really spectacular building at such a small scale, but still representing these really nicely using some minifig kind of pistols, even some Wolverine claws there, and the roller skate piece on the side to represent some of the cockpits. And then here you've got uh, little tiny tracks for uh, some of the kind of helicopter type rotation pieces in there. So Jake is an incredible builder and it's great to see him tackling uh, some really iconic scenes here. This is a spectacular fantasy forest tower built by Catherine and Samuel Harmon. At the top, you've got the big kind of fairy tower with some really incredible colors and stained glass window here. I love the way they've chosen those colors there. And then it contrasts so nicely with the trunk of this tree and you've got kind of the uh, woodsman dwellers down here. You see some of them inside the trunk there. Then at the very base, you get to some of the uh, mushroom houses and some of the mushroom people down here as well. And then you can even see kind of through the very middle of the trunk, they've got this fantastic entryway and some lights inside there. There's uh, a band here in this part of the tree, which is really cool. I love the little tiny green doors and then the plant life all around the base of this tree is super cool as well. But then the best part is definitely when you look inside uh, both the tower and the tree itself, You've got this big round kind of keep on the tower. Then there's all this kind of trans red pieces inside there in the center of the keep with the white leaves. And inside the tree down here, you've got people enjoying their lives, just kind of having tea and going about their days inside the trunk of this tree. So really just kind of fantastically detailed and fun creative scenes.